A first listen and analysis of I Can't Get No Satisfaction by the Rolling Stones. So it's May of 1965 and the Rolling Stones are staying in a hotel in Clearwater, Florida. Before going to bed, Keith Richards is fiddling around with his tape recorder before eventually nodding off to sleep. When he wakes up, he hears on the tape recorder a rough sketch for the track I Can't Get No Satisfaction followed by hours of snoring. Days later, they're cutting the track at RCA Studios in Hollywood and it's on shelves in early June of that year. Now it becomes their first number one hit in the US and catapults them to a new level of success and fame. In many ways, people think that it may be their most important record they've ever made. So Keith is often thought of as being a riff and hit making machine. And from this story, it seems as if it's practically instinctual for him. He can make hits and riffs in his sleep essentially. So let's check this one out. If you do end up enjoying the video, hit the like button, perhaps share it with a friend if you think it's worth it. Also, if you want to see daily music reactions and analysis, hit the subscribe button. We are heading quickly towards 10,000 subscribers. So if you want to be a part of the journey, join the fun. Now let's get into the reaction. Here we go. This is the Rolling Stones. I can't get no satisfaction. Great riff. He made it in his sleep. Great guitar licks. Okay, wow. Very, very cool and unique experience hearing this band in this sort of raw, unrefined state. Now, they go on to sort of master their style. I think of tracks like Gimme Shelter, which are just absolutely brilliant musically. This isn't quite that, but it's so damn catchy. And it's got really the fundamental aspects of what I think the Rolling Stones represent. It's that rebellious nature, that middle finger up to all the rules, you know, um, especially as a hip hop fan, I really, really can connect to that feeling of rebelliousness. I mean, that's really where hip hop started, right? In the streets, in the parks, a big middle finger up to the establishment. And this is essentially what this track is about. Really cool. And I mean, just take certain lines from this thing. Like when I'm driving in my car and that man comes on the radio and he's telling me more and more about some useless information. Think of uh, Public Enemy. This is uh, straight from like that kind of same ilk, that same cloth. Very cool. Let's keep this going. So catchy. Love the chorus. <laughs> wow, okay. I've always thought of the Rolling Stones in a sort of weird way as being like the first punk band. Now, I don't know if people are going to agree with me, but I've always felt that they're just there's something about them that screams punk is the down to the delivery of of Mick Jagger. And I know he studied James Brown a lot, too. And so that's why a lot of his cadences are very rhythmic. He's delivering like 
not singing notes. He's like shouting them out to 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 the crowd or to the audience, and it sort of adds to this idea that he's like standing on like a stage or something, and he's like rebel rousing to the youth almost, you know, Socrates style. Um, very very cool. So like this is like pro proto punk almost if you want to call it that at least it sounds like that to me people might um correct me on this one but i imagine this really really got people going man this live to a bunch of like young people i imagine it was causing like riots and whatnot um very cool such a catchy chorus an amazing time capsule into the minds of young people at that moment now contextually i understand that this was like a generational shift especially in this era this is like 65 right where like the people of that time were starting to feel very different from their parents right and i imagine this track cut home right to the people like they felt like yeah yeah i can get no satisfaction either th th these lies that people are telling us I mean, talk about some of these lines, right? From even from the second verse, and a man comes on and tells me how white my shirts can be. This is a real, real like rebellious attitude. Also, I think about contextually, like right? right, 65. Like this is really the beginnings of what you can consider rock and roll, where like uh, Dylan just goes electric. I think that is like the turning point into what would be considered the rock and roll era, right? And like something like this comes out, it's just. Uh, it's a total switch up to the music. I think that came before it. Very, very cool, man. Now, when he's speaking about I can't get no satisfaction, I mean, I think you could take this multiple ways in the sense that that's like Mick Jagger's whole ethos, isn't it? He can't get no satisfaction. There's not enough girls in the world, money, fame, adulation, songs to write, the whole thing. That's kind of his whole part of it. But I think with that line, he really cuts deep into the mind of what people were feeling at the time. Pretty damn cool. I really like this song. It grew on me with the track playing through, especially with that super catchy riff and chorus. Um, and there's these beautiful little guitar licks that are being done in the background that are adding so much to it i don't know it's just a great groove as well and i don't know as i was saying as a hip-hop fan i really really can get with this sort of attitude in a lot of rolling stone tracks uh two thumbs up man <laughs> 